demo of Skybox Risk Control. Risk Control allows you to do attack simulation on your network to see where vulnerabilities can or cannot be exploited. And basically, you can think of it as penetration testing in a box. What we need is to be able to model the network and the vulnerabilities that exist on that network and then define some threat origins and some business assets so that we can begin our penetration or attack simulation testing. So we build the network by gaining uh, access or importing all of the different configurations of your routers, your firewalls, <clears throat> uh, IPS devices, and load balancers. Building a network model is the first step. And so can getting access to those configuration files, importing them, using our task management system, um, and building that network model is the first step. When we do that, we also build a network map. You can see here, here's our network map. You can have different network maps that you could see all the networks, Europe, uh, whatever, and you can as well see different hops. You can save these, you can uh, delete maps, export the images, all of that we're using our network map. The next step would be to import all of the vulnerabilities that you have on your network. So we import things from Qualys, Foundstone, Encircle, Nessus, um, a variety of different scanners. And so we would take these, this information from all of the different scanners and we map or correlate them all together. So if you have more than one scanner, we would correlate them as well. And the reason we can correlate them is that we have our own Skybox View dictionary that does, understands all the different threat analysis and understands all the external catalogs and external URLs on how these different vulnerabilities correlate with each other and how they work. And you can see here, if I look at any one of these vulnerabilities, I get the information about all the catalogs that are out there. I also can get all the external URLs. So one quick place or one source for all of your vulnerabilities. The next step would be to identify all of your business units and assets. And these are your most riskiest uh, assets in your organization and probably where you would want to start. It's basically going through kind of a classification of data. And you can see here I've classified some information already. I've got some finance database servers. I've got some finance servers. Um, I've got uh, production. I've got some DMZ items, some NOx. Um, so all of these are important assets to this organization. And I can take each one of these and add what we call business impacts and regulations. So the business impact or the damage that these servers can cause, what kind of impact would it be on our organization, is that these are mission critical and financial information. The damage to them is very high, and it would affect confidentiality, integrity, and availability. All of these impacts can be modified, changed, you can create new ones. These are just some of the out of the box. The same thing with regulations. I can apply regulations to these assets that would be affected if damage was caused to them. And again, New ones you can create, you can modify or change the existing ones as well. The next step that we have is to define where these threat origins or where our threats can come from in our network. And because we have that network design and we have visibility into the network, we know where there, there might be uh, threat locations that might um, deem you know, potential threats in our network. So here we have like an internet hacker, we have a corrupted insider coming in from the development um, area. We have some partner networks that are business-to-business -business threats. And we can have as many of these as we want, and we can analyze how these uh, different locations can access our different business assets. And using the vulnerabilities that exist, we can find out what's the highest risk to us and where we need to address, or what we need to address first. So once I've got all of this information in here, the last step would be to run what we call simulate attacks. And this task that, I'm, that you're seeing here, I can either run on an ad hoc basis or on, an, on a scheduled basis using our task management system. So at the same time that we're importing all of our new routing and configuration files, um, we can then run the attack simulation and see if anything's changed from day to day. Um, we can, we'll also be importing all of the new 
uh, scan information so that any new vulnerabilities that were found can also be tested in this environment. So once we run the attack simulation, we can then go to our risk and exposure or risk control area, and we can look at a variety, uh, the data in a variety of different ways. We have business assets by risk. We can look at things by exposure, by regulations, and we can see the things that are highest risk to us. If I go here to business assets by risk, I can quickly see that my finance database servers are at the highest risk. I can see that there's two vulnerabilities on DB0 and DB1, which have indirectly exposed vulnerabilities. This tells me when it's an indirectly exposed vulnerability that this is a multi-step attack. If I wanna take a look and see how these attacks occur, I can right click and go to my attack explorer and I quickly see my different threat origins and how these attacks can get to my finance database server. I can quickly see that there's a highlighted route, and if I do a highlight, it'll just focus on that, on that highlight. And I can see here that it goes from the internet to either this DMZ DNS zero affecting this bind over, uh, overflow uh, vulnerability or to the DMZ DNS one. And because I can get access to any of these vulnerabilities, I can gain control of root and thus take over the finance database servers, which in the case also have a couple of vulnerabilities that I could possibly exploit as well. So as you can see here, this is a directly exposed vulnerability and directly exposed to one of my threat origins. So this is the first one I should definitely have to address. So if I go back to my Skybox, uh, risk and exposure view, I may want to address all my directly exposed vulnerabilities first. And I quickly see that I have 10 vulnerabilities out of, if I go here to my vulnerabilities, out of 1,778 vulnerabilities that are directly exposed on my network. And so I quickly have eliminated a lot of vulnerabilities that either possess small risk or are inaccessible in my network and I can quickly mitigate a lot of risk in my environment by addressing just 10 vulnerabilities. <clears throat> you can look at the data in a, also in a lot of different ways. If you need to do Windows reports on the vulnerabilities, if you have any new vulnerabilities, um, you could see vulnerabilities by host. So if you wanna address the machines that have the most vulnerabilities, you can do that as well. So this is a lot of uh, data that you have at your fingertips and a lot of analysis and information that you can use to address and mitigate uh, vulnerabilities in your environment. Same thing is we can also report on a lot of these risks and vulnerabilities. All of these are out of the box reports. You can also customize these reports to be specific to threshold, uh, risk thresholds or scales, specific business units or assets. You can email these reports and schedule them either in PDF, HTML, or rich text format. And again, you can create as many of these templates as you want, automate the generation of those using our task management system, and email them to the appropriate parties to have things fixed. <clears throat> and that's uh, Skybox Risk Control.